gladiators, my name is Crystal and Romulo from Studio 652 News, and welcome back to our newscast. We have a lot of news stories for you. Today we'll be taking a look at how important it is to enhance sleeping habits, what our scheduling will look like for in-person learning, a story about a student overcoming a tough obstacle in her life, the TV broadcasting class, and student activism. Now let's go to Marilyn on how getting more sleep benefits students. Hello, my name is Marilyn Ayala with Studio 652 News. Nowadays, many students do not get as much sleep. This causes many to feel dull or uninspired to do anything. How can students and staff feel more energetic while being in online school and how can having a good night to rest benefit this? Well, here we have Ms. Perez from the Student Research Center. Overall, it kind of really allows our actual body, like our physical body and our brain to heal. Our brains and our body love routine. So when you have a balanced schedule for sleeping, it actually helps you better fall asleep, stay asleep, and kind of combat things like insomnia so that your physical body and your mind can have that time to really heal. When an individual gets adequate amount of sleep, they overall have a better like mental and physical health. But actual specific things is like improved attention, improved behavior, and improved mood. So the way that you feel about yourself, improved learning, and improved memory too. So the more that you sleep frequently on a balanced system or in a rhythmic system, you retain more information and you can recall information a lot more, which helps you if you're trying to study for tests or exams or trying to, you know, identify or learn a concept or something that you're learning in school. It's definitely really important to to have that balance or that schedule because I mean the other thing too is it it helps us as individuals feel more secure and feel like that sense of comfort too so that's it's important in many different aspects. There you have it. Sleeping can be very beneficial to all of us. We should encourage each other to have a good night's sleep. This has been Marilyn Ayala with City of 652 News. The district office is always looking at an option for returning to school. We know how eager students are to get back into the normal learning environment. Let's hear from Jake and how the district plans on sending students back to the classroom. Hello everyone, this is Jake Simcoe from Studio 652 and today I'll be interviewing Ms. Simcoe about the hybrid models and what ABC is going to be looking at in the future. Well, currently ABC has sent out a proposal to all of the parents in the district uh, with a hybrid model that would have students on campus two days a week and asynchronous learning three days a week. That would be a reduction in physical time with their teachers by 50% and an increase in asynchronous learning by two days. You would go from one day of asynchronous, which is currently on Wednesdays, to three days of asynchronous learning. I just recently visited Los Alamitos High School, which is in Orange County, and they are doing an AM-PM hybrid model. So their students are either in the morning block or in the afternoon block, and they are physically on campus four days a week with one day virtual learning with their teachers. In between the AM block and the PM block, they have put in an hour so that students can safely get off of campus before the next or second group comes on uh, in the afternoon. So I've also looked at the model that La Habra High School, again in Orange County, is currently using. Their students are on campus four days a week uh, with all of their teachers, and the teachers are actually streaming their class live. So if a student is not scheduled to be on campus, they are still in the class live as the teacher is teaching. This provides continuity and no loss of learning in terms of what the kids get exposed to over the course of the week. Well, the future of school is definitely looking a little bit better now that we have some hybrid models to go off of. This is Jake Simko from Studio 652, signing off. See you all later. Many people struggle with obstacles presented to them throughout their lives. Here is one example of student athlete Skylar Sanchez and her challenging setback in her softball career. I was in Salinas playing a softball tournament, and this was uh, my the summer right after freshman year. And I was in center field, and my teammate was in uh, right field, and there was a ball hit between us, and we both ran for the ball, but we called it at the same time, and her glove had hit me in the face, and I fell in a really weird way. And once I fell, like I was in shock and like I didn't really know what happened. 
So I, I couldn't really move. Right after that game, I was taken to the ER and they gave me x-rays. I broke the top of my tibia bone and I also uh, tore my meniscus and I found out that I also sprained my ankle. Going into the surgery, I was pretty nervous. The thought of someone opening up your body and working on your insides is kind of like scary. But for like a week or two, it was really bad pain. And then it started to go away and I got better. It was really hard not to play softball because I was just sitting in the dugout watching all my teammates play and practice. And I was just waiting to get cleared. The biggest challenge I had was my mental game, trying to regain confidence in myself. And one fear that I had was I wasn't going to be the player that I used to be. And another one I had was that I wasn't going to be at the same level that all of my teammates were at. You know, it was it was really hard. And I struggled a lot mentally because it was sad, like especially when you didn't do good in a game. And it just brought my confidence to a way lower level. It was my support system that helped me overcome these challenges. Because when I had a bad game, they would always try to make me feel better and give me all these pep talks, like my mom and my dad especially. And then I also had a few friends who were always there for me and who helped me through it as well. You should believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself and you don't have faith in yourself or if you give up, then you're not going to be able to reach your goal. It's going to be almost impossible. With learning being online, there are many things that classes are limited to. Now to Isis at how the TV broadcasting class overcame those struggles. Hello, my name is Isis Aguilar reporting for Studio 652 News. Today's topic is going to be based on how the TV broadcasting class is doing during this pandemic. Could you please introduce yourself and what do you do? So hi there, y'all. Um, my name is Mr. Randy. And I teach uh, film production and television broadcasting here at Gar High School. So the classes that I teach, uh, film production and TV broadcasting, are not exactly ideal for online. But that doesn't mean that they're impossible. Uh, they just present a few more challenges. What are the advantages and disadvantages of teaching a class online? The advantages of online learning um, falls on the side of the students more than the teachers. And I say this because I've taught um, online courses for nearly six years now at uh, Cal Baptist University. Uh, although those classes have been um, graphic design and topography and digital imaging. And those are a little bit easier to teach online than um, television broadcasting and filmmaking, but um, online um, affords the students some additional independence on assignment and, and it kind of teaches them to um, search out solutions. And that is a skill that will help everyone um, in the workforce or if the students choose to go on to college. Um, Independent and critical thinking are really, really great skills to have. Activities that we do, it's a little bit different with the different classes. Um, television broadcasting, filmmaking. Um, that said, producing short films or broadcasts, um, it involves so many different facets. Things that takes um, years, or even decades to, to master. Um, there's no way to learn all these different skills other than by actually doing, hands-on doing. So we do a lot of short films and um, short broadcasts. Um, and with each one, we learn new skills and new techniques. And each of these skills and techniques build upon the other. So it's important that um, the students engaged in every um, activity, every short film, every broadcast, because we, we are learning those new skills and um, we don't leave them off as uh, the weeks and the months go by. They, they, they build upon each other and so the quality just gets better and better, hopefully. Using apps like WeVideo, they can edit on their phones or online. 
The teacher may be tagged by a student in all of his or her posts for their grade. Our students would want to keep delivering it in an ideal environment. While many students have phones, there's many of them that don't. So it may be harder for them to film on their computers or other devices they use. What apps do you use during this time? That is a really good question. Um, since we can't meet in class, um, the students home, they don't have access to all the uh, amazing equipment and software that um, GAR has afforded us. I mean, we have an amazing um, studio, editing room, and um, I'm really proud of it. And, um, and I think the students are too. Uh, at least the ones who have been there. Um, I found uh, an online editing program called uh, We Video, and it works quite well um, for our purposes. I mean, we're able to make it work. It's not as powerful as the um, software that we have uh, in our classroom, but it it definitely works. Definitely works. Um, our screen um, screenwriting software. Um, has always been online. It's called um, Celtic. And um, so being that, you know, the students have access to that is a, is a great plus. It's a, um, it's a fantastic tool. We have another tool at our um, advantage and that tool is our phones. Um, phones are a, <laughs> a dreaded item in the classroom for many teachers, um, but used in the right way, used for good, not evil. Uh, not having the proper equipment to film can also be challenging. You may not have the right editing software slash tools that you had at school or filming B-roll. I think our biggest challenge um, during this pandemic is in the area of lighting and um, audio. Um, students don't have access uh, during this pandemic to um, our professional lighting gear. Um, we have both in-studio lighting and multiple portable lighting units. Um, so that is hard. And um, audio. Um, we don't have access, most students don't, a few of them do, but most students don't have access to um, the microphones needed to record films. Um, so those are challenges, but they're not, um, they're not insurmountable. We can overcome those and we find ways to overcome them. Once again, my name is Isis Ayala reporting for Studio 652 News. Thanks, Isis. I got the chance to speak with some students about activism and how important it is in this generation's lives. Let's take a look. With everything going on right now and with the recent election, students look towards activism for an escape and a voice. But why care? Why would students under the legal voting age care about politics? I'm Crystal Romlo from 652 News, and today we interviewed students and staff members to understand the importance of activism through students and the youth and how future leaders could impact the world of politics in the near future. I think that activism is uh, making a change or trying to have like a positive influence on you know, your peers are the community. Activism relates to politics because, you know, like I said, institutions that are political can hold back other people. There's different levels of activism. You have like the base level activism, which is kind of spreading information, like those Instagram infographics that were going around. As you start to go up, that's where it starts to get political because now you're not just challenging the views of those around you, that those that go to school with you, you're challenging actual laws and you're challenging people that are in these like these high political figures. So then that's when it kind of turns into the whole like political aspect. So I think um, students, especially high school students, start caring about politics and activism because um, we're really close to becoming adults and going into the workforce. And I think it's really important to become politically literate because by the time you're 18, you know, we'll have to like understand what certain policies mean and actually understand what certain like politicians stand for and not just like what they say. If you're not politically literate as like a young teen, by the time you become an adult, you'll just believe what everyone says. So I think it's important to like actually understand what people say. 
and like what they mean by their policies. Even though we aren't of voter age, it affects us and it affects our families. And it doesn't matter what our upbringing is and where we live, what, you know, what culture, you know, what our race, if we're female, male, it affects us one way or another. You can see even when there was situations going on within our own school district, ABC Unified, you had these protests and these emails being sent out all by students. I'm protesting on Wednesday about um, the school district's policy on like sexual assault and like uh, sexual harassment and things of that nature. And the group that I'm doing with is literally like three other kids I know from my school. And if you see injustice in your community, all you need is to, you know, take the time, plan out what you want to do about it, and then just do it. Get together with some friends and just do what you need to do. Protest, petition, whatever it is. Nothing's going to change unless we take it into our hands and change it. So I feel like as much as, you know, we get turned down, it's important for us to make the change because at the end of the day, it's our future. It's going to be our future families, our future children, and our jobs that are on the line. So we have to be the ones to help. At the same time, I understand that like it's a really privileged um, thing to be politically literate. But I think, yeah, if you have access to becoming politically literate, you should definitely like take, use that to your advantage. If you want a more progressive society, a more just society, we as the youth have to go out and advocate for that. As the future of the world lies in the hands of a younger generation, it is important to do your part as a student and stay informed within the community. This is your future, so get involved and make it right. I'm Crystal Romlo from 652 News, signing off. That's all we have for you today, Gladiators. I'm Crystal Romlo, this is Studio 652 News, and we look forward to seeing you next time.